This is the ninth lecture in the series looking at masonry construction. This lecture will look at the basic principles of mortar. So in the last lecture we looked at stonework uh, patterns and how stone could be put together to form different appearances. And we touched upon how important it was to the, those appearances that uh, mortar was considered. The mortar is a large constituent part of the construction of a wall, and this lecture is going to look at what mortar is, what it does within a wall, and what criteria should be considered when specifying it. So first of all, we need to understand what it is. And mortar is really made up of three basic components. We have uh, water, sand, and a binder. And for some reason, I haven't done them in the correct order, so let's go for sand first. Sand is the main component of mortar. It makes up approximately two-thirds, or a little bit more than that, of the volume of the, the mortar. And a good quality, consistent building sand is what needs to be used. If we have very fine grains of sand within that uh, mix, effectively we'll need more water to be able to make the mortar, and that's going to result in a weaker mortar. The binder, uh, the thing that you might think of as cement, is really there to fill the air voids between the grains of sand. If we looked at that sand under a microscope, we would see lots of little um, circular grains, and between them would be air space. And the purpose of a binder is that it fills that space. So we talk about a well-filled mortar as something that, that gets rid of all of those air spaces. So in a typical... Um, Kind of volume of sand for mortar, air pockets might account for about a third of that volume. And the two most common binders are uh, lime and cement. Um, and it's also possible to use uh, either of those to make mortar or both of them. We can, we can mix them both together to make a mortar. Water is the third component within mortar. And it's important that we use clean, fresh water as anything dissolved in the water can cause problems later on. We also need to think about how dry the bricks are. If we're laying bricks in very warm weather and those bricks are very dry, then they're going to suck moisture out of the mortar. And that's referred to as the suction rate. And that has an adverse effect on the, the workability of the mortar. Well, we can adjust the wetness of mortar during laying to maintain those moisture levels while we're working it. So mortar's got three main functions. Uh, the first function we would think of is as a bonding agent. And this is the most obvious thing. It's what you probably thought of first. Um, and really this is a kind of glue or an adhesive to allow brickwork to uh, be stuck together during construction. Um, but it's actually not the most important function that uh, mortar has. The important thing is that it allows loads to be transferred vertically down through the wall. It fills all the gaps between the irregular surfaces of bricks and stones so that any weight or load that's put into the wall um, isn't concentrated on single points and there's no voids where there's there's no load transfer being taken place. And the third function is that it protects the wall from the weather. If we didn't have mortar or if we had very poor mortar with gaps in it, um, it would allow for rainwater penetration. So if we can fully fill the joints between bricks or blocks or stones with a mortar, then we can help prevent rainwater penetration. So as with all building materials, there are criteria which need to be considered when choosing mortar. And there are six for, for mortar that we've got laid out here. The structural requirements of the wall, the type of construction and position within the building, um, how exposed it's going to be, what type of material are we dealing with, what do we want it to look like, and how do we actually want to use it, what the workability of it is. So if we look at the structural characteristics, mortar mixes are supplied in different strength classes. So we can get very weak mortars supplied or we can mix them 
or we can get very strong mortars. And these are usually uh, specified according to uh, British standard and they run in various M classes and different mortar manufacturers will have different M classes that they can supply. So for example if we take the middle one there an M5 that would have a compressive strength of 5 newtons per millimeter squared and different walls will require different strengths of mortar depending on their use and location. We can build internal and external walls out of masonry, so the mortar that's used for those walls uh, may be different. We also have to think about whether the, the wall is going to be wet, i.e. below the DPC or above it. And in cer some circumstances, it will be important to choose mortar with specific characteristics to suit that location. Different materials, brick, stone, concrete block, will also require different mortars as the materials will react differently and may have different joint depths that we have to fill. We also have to think about the exposure. Generally for building mortars, one part cement is required for three parts sand, and um, that's to fill all those air voids. And this produces a well-filled mortar, which is suitable for severe exposure. If we put more sand in, we get a comparatively weaker mortar which is less suitable for severe exposures. There's also the possibility we can add things into the mortar, and we refer to these as admixtures, and they can improve workability or extend the setting time. But depending on the exposure, some of these admixtures might make the mortar less durable in terms of water ingress. The characteristic of the stone or brick being used will have an impact on the type of mortar that we need to use. Different materials have different strengths and will move differently due to expansion and contraction. Mortar should generally be, be softer than the material around about it. It's got to be sacrificial to the, to the masonry. And if it's not, if it ends up being stronger than the material we're trying to build out of, we can end up with serious problems, especially when we're using softer materials such as sandstone. And it would also be rare for the same mortar to be used on a historic stone wall and a modern brick wall. So understanding the age of a building is also important. And mortar makes up a significant proportion of a wall. If we take a kind of basic stretcher bond wall, it might be 18 to 20% of the, the, the overall surface that we see. So choosing different mortars can change the look of a building drastically. Coloured mortars are also available, which you can use to match or contrast with the wall material that you're building out of. Workability of mortar is important. Uh, people are going to have to use it, it has to be easy to use. And we would refer to workability as the capacity for a mortar to be flexible, pliable, easily spread and able to flow into beds and joints. Traditional lime mortars are more workable than cement mortars, but they generally produce a weaker mortar. If we take the strength or we want the strength of a cement mortar, if we add lime to it, we can improve the texture as well as bringing other benefits. So in conclusion, all stonework and brickwork, well, almost all of it, except for dry stone wall, requires some form of mortar within its construction. Mortar is essential as it performs the three basic functions of weather protection, load transfer and bonding. So aspects of this lecture that you should take away are that mortar is composed of a binder, sand and water, that the binder needs to fill air voids between the grains of sand, that different mortars have different properties, that criteria such as exposure, materials, workability and structure should be considered when specifying mortar. Okay, thank you very much for listening and I will uh, see you in the studio for any questions.